Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the TCA peel. I'm gonna explain what it is and what it can help with. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know before considering getting a TCA peel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. A TCA peel is a type of chemical peel. Chemical peels are procedures performed by dermatologists, estheticians, and plastic surgeons to exfoliate the skin and treat a wide variety of skin lesions. Chemical peels fall into three categories, superficial, medium, and deep. Superficial chemical peels exfoliate the very top layer of the skin, whereas medium and deep peels uh, reach down to the deeper layers of the skin, the dermis, for deeper exfoliation. Depending on the depth of the peel, that is gonna determine the treatment results. Superficial chemical peels are used to treat things like blackheads, whiteheads, they can improve the look of sunspots, aka solar lentigines, and they can smooth out skin texture and very lightly exfoliate the skin. Whereas medium and deep peels, those are going to be used to uh, target the deeper layers of the skin to improve the look of wrinkles and certain types of scars. The deeper the peel, the longer the healing time and the greater the risk of adverse side effects like hyperpigmentation and scarring. There are a wide variety of reagents that can be used to peel the skin. TCA stands for trichloroacetic acid and it is a skin peeling agent. When people say, I'm, I'm interested in having a TCA peel, that's not very specific. TCA can be used as a superficial peel, a medium peel, or a deep peel. So whenever anyone's talking about having a TCA peel, your follow-up question should be, what was the depth? The depth of a TCA peel is going to determine the results and the depth is determined by the concentration of the TCA and the number of passes or applications of the TCA onto the skin. A superficial TCA peel, again, is only going to target the top layer of the skin, and it can be helpful for improving some of the lesions of acne, namely blackheads and whiteheads. It also can help with uh, post-acne redness. Superficial TCA peel can also help with skin texture, and if you have some hyperpigmentation that is located up high in the skin, it can help exfoliate that out and just improve overall skin tone. A medium depth TCA peel can help in targeting not only wrinkles and fine lines, because again, remember, medium depth, you're starting to get into the dermis. So it can, th th in the dermis is really, is really the heart of where wrinkles are, are forming. So it can help with that. It also can help remove uh, pre, what are called preneoplasias, uh, early uh, beginning stages of skin cancers uh, and sun damage. So that's beneficial. A lot of people, especially people who have a lot of sun damage, make a lot of skin cancers, a medium depth peel is something that can have potentially chemo preventative outcomes by removing some of those early uh, damaged skin cells that might otherwise go on to form skin cancers. A medium depth TCA peel also may be useful for improving acne scars. In some cases, before a medium depth TCA peel, if the aim is to improve the look of scars, you can actually take um, solid CO2 and kind of carefully freeze the, the edges of the scars. And what this ends up doing is it causes local uh, destruction of the skin cells and a lot of edema so that the, the TCA that you would then apply on top of that can penetrate deeper. So it kind of allows for a little bit more finesse in destroying the edges of scars and smoothing things out while doing TCA. Overall, TCA is a very safe reagent. It's not absorbed into the body. It's even technically safe enough to use during pregnancy. As a side note, we use TCA at much, much higher uh, strengths to treat anogenital warts uh, because it is just, you know, it destroys the skin cells basically. So we, we use it and it can be used in pregnancy to treat anogenital warts at very high concentration. So what I'm getting at is it's a safe, it's a safe reagent. However, when we're talking about peeling the skin, exfoliating the skin and causing 
uh, just, uh, you know, uh, localized destruction of certain skin cells, there's definitely the risk of scarring and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, especially in medium to deep skin tones. Uh, so, you know, TCA is not the best option for those folks. Instead, when it comes to a peeling reagent, salicylic acid is, is often a better choice uh, for, depending on, depending again on a particular skin lesion that you're looking to improve and the depth of the peel. So what might you expect with the TCA peel? First and foremost, I would recommend seeing a board certified dermatologist or plastic surgeon, especially if you are considering a peel of medium, of a medium depth, you know, to improve the look of more of the photo aging, wrinkles, to tighten the skin. A board certified dermatologist or plastic surgeon should be the one doing peels at that depth. With a superficial TCA peel, there's actually very little downtime. You can expect to have peeling usually around four to five days. Now, if you're having a deeper TCA peel, the peeling after the procedure can last, you know, around 10 days. So be prepared for the peeling aspect of things. Um, before the procedure though, uh, the, the weeks leading up to, to before you have the TCA peel, it's really important actually to um, be very <laughs> aggressive with sun protection. Uh, the reason this is helpful is that if you're getting a lot of sun exposure before the peel, that's gonna make it actually more likely that it will heal with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Uh, then of course, after the peel, you have to be equally aggressive with sun protection by wearing broad spectrum sunscreen and relying on sun protective clothing, hats, scarves, not staying out in the sun. All those things that I always drive home to you guys, really important for having a good outcome with a TCA peel. One question I get a lot about peels is, do you need to stop uh, your retinoid or retinol? You need to ask the provider, whether, you know, the dermatologist, uh, what topicals you should stop, because in some cases it's beneficial to use a retinol a few weeks before, like a superficial peel, it kind of primes the skin and and helps with more even uptake of the TCA. Whereas in other cases, it would be recommended to stop. Uh, in some cases, we actually prescribe hydroquinone in advance to reduce the risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So it's going to depend on the type of peel and your skin and the depth and all those things. So that's something to certainly clarify far in advance what topicals are okay to continue using and which ones you should stop and how long you should stop them for, how long after the procedure you should stop, when you can res resume using them, all those things you wanna clarify. If you have a history of cold sores and you're getting a medium or deeper peel, you will likely be prescribed an oral antiviral medicine to reduce the risk of an outbreak. The day of the peel is actually a pretty quick process. It's easier in my opinion to not wear makeup because you're gonna have to take it all off. Uh, and that can kind of be a pain. The, the first step is we actually rub acetone all over the skin. Uh, acetone, like what's in nail polish remover, which may seem odd, but really what this does is it degreases the skin and kind of gets the skin um, more even for a better uptake of the TCA and more even uptake of the TCA. Because if we don't do that, you've got patches on your skin where some areas are oilier than others. Uh, you've got some heaped up skin cells here and there, and that's gonna lead to uneven and inconsistent, you know, uneven application, which we don't want. After we degrease your skin with acetone, then we take uh, some petrolatum ointment, like Vaseline, and put it around your eyes, around your nose, and around your mouth. Because you don't want, we don't want the TCA going there. It can be too irritating in those areas, especially the thin skin of the eyelids. That would be a bad news bears. And then, as part of the peel, we take a cotton swab uh, applicator, usually, dunked in the TCA solution, and we basically paint it on to the skin, more or less, in an even fashion. And we are actually looking for that frosting, that precipitation. Now to remind you, the number of coats dictates the depth. So the person coating your face with the TCA solution, they're paying attention to that frosting, that precipitation as an indicator of you know, depth. So after the desired level of frosting is achieved, um, then we just apply some cool water for comfort and that's basically it. Now again, you wanna be really, really aggressive with the sun protection because your skin is more vulnerable to sun damage and that's going to 
that's going to put you at risk for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. I have a video on how to get the best results from your chemical peels. I will link that down below. It is old, but the tips still apply. So check that out. Um, that will help you if you are planning to have one of these uh, to you know kind of know what you need to do in advance. After you leave the office, you can expect to you know, have some, it's not uncommon actually for there to be a little bit of swelling. That usually goes away after a few days. You also are gonna have peeling. And the, extent, the number of days of peeling of the skin is gonna depend again on the depth. Maybe like four to five days for a light peel, up to 10 days you know, for a medium uh, to deep peel. Very important to not pick at the peeling because if you pick, that increases the risk of infection, that prolongs the, peel, the peeling process, it kind of aggravates the skin, leads to dryness, irritation, can flare the acne, can flare acne if that's what you know, you're dealing with, and it can put you at risk definitely for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So do not pick at the peeling. Uh, and keep your skincare routine very, very simple. Just a sunscreen, a cleanser, and a moisturizer. I will list some of my favorites down below in the description box that are very gentle. You wanna to stick to fragrance-free products. Uh, just you know, keep it very simple. It's fine to wear makeup. Uh, makeup is fine to wear. However, you, know, you may wanna just keep it simple uh, while you're peeling, because makeup can kinda of look a little odd on skin that's actively peeling, it kinda of look clumpy and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, makeup is fine to wear. Just be aware that it may be a little more irritating for you and you may want to keep the makeup more minimal. It's kind of up to you. How do the in-office peels compare to the at-home kits that you can do? You can, you know, you can buy them and do your own peel at home. I've reviewed several at-home peels here, like the, the uh, Exuviance one. Uh, those are very, 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 very superficial. You're never gonna get the level of results that you're gonna get with an in-office procedure because the concentrations are much higher in office than what is allowed to be sold in these over-the-counter products. And that is a good thing. Um, it, you know, as I outlined the process of applying the peel, you can see there's a lot of room for error if you try and do it on yourself. Typically, you know, when, when, these, when the peel is applied, you're lying down and somebody is looking over you who's applying it, they can see where things are going. Uh, they can make sure there are no skip areas or that they're not, you know, doing too many coats in one area and not another. Whereas doing it yourself, I mean, there's more room for error. Plus, depending on the depth, you could have scarring post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So you're never gonna get that level of results. In my opinion, the at-home peels, they're useful for maintaining the results that you do get with an in-office uh, peel, namely a superficial peel. And the, the at-home peel kits, like the Exuviance one, they also can be helpful just for smoothing out skin texture. They can help in lifting up some superficial hyperpigmentation. Yeah, the, the at-home peels are helpful as maintenance uh, and they definitely can yield some nice results as far as just smoothing out the surface of the skin, helping your makeup go on better. If you use other active ingredients like retinol or vitamin C serums, then doing some sort of at-home peel, uh, you know, kind of on a maintenance basis can just help keep the skin, the top layer of the skin more smooth and allow for better uptake of those active ingredients, more even uptake. Uh, so they're definitely beneficial, but to reiterate, you're never gonna get the type of results with an at-home kit that you're gonna get in office. And you're certainly never, ever, ever, nor should you, you're never gonna get like a medium to deep, deep depth peel with an in-home kit. All right, guys, that's what I can tell you about the TCA peel. I hope this was helpful, gave you some you know, background on what to expect what it can be useful for. As a side note, I do have a video on TCA Cross for acne scars. So check that out. TCA Cross is another procedure that we use employing TCA as a reagent uh, specifically to treat certain types of acne scars. So check that out if you have acne scars. I think uh, you know it is a great procedure with TCA. Uh, I hope this video was helpful to you all. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.